Hey everybody, welcome back to Highly Unlikely with Josh and Janae. Yes. And we filled the studio today with some amazing people. Mm-hmm. Three on a couch over here. <laughs> <laughs> and, three family uh, members on a couch. Yes, three family members on a couch. We've been talking about relationships this season and mm-hmm. today we couldn't think of any better people to bring in to talk about relationships in your workplace. And mm-hmm. for you guys, that there's kind of a double meaning there because you're excellent at talking about just having a great working environment. I know Nexus has been one of the top places to work. You know, it's won awards for the culture that you guys have created at Nexus, but also you're working in close proximity to family Mm -hmm. as you're all related. And so there's dynamics there too that that people can relate to that we're excited to talk about today. So we also just love you guys. You've invested a lot in our lives. Mm -hmm. Jordan's one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're just grateful for you mm-hmm. and excited that you said yes to doing this. And Bob and Lori are some of the most encouraging people, I think, in our yeah. church. We very often get an email from you or just to encourage or, yeah. So just cherish you as people. And yeah. I love your wife. She's great. But she we have to start with the question <clears throat> that I guess is good. Okay. Um, today is a Wednesday that we're recording, but imagine you no longer have to work. How would you spend a Tuesday? That's a great question. It is. Just spend a Tuesday. Are you going to answer first or should I? I I usually answer first to give you guys time to think if you need time to think. Yes. Yes. Oh, what would I do? My question is, do I have kids or not? I don't have to work, but do I have kids? I would say I don't have kids. Man, I probably would read. What would I do? I'd probably take a nap. This is so far from our reality that it's really hard to <laughs> What would I do? Think about what would I Man, do? I think I would. I think I do just miss time to like read, honestly, and do what I want. I'd probably go shopping and take a nap. I feel like I would become one of those people that takes very, like, very good care of their yard. You, you know, especially would. North Dakota. Like, this thing, no matter how much you manicure it, is only lasting three months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think I'd probably yeah. spend my time doing something like that. Yeah. What about you guys? That uh, answer has changed a lot from maybe five years ago, six years ago, to where like I'd probably be at home drinking coffee to start the morning, probably go for a run or a hike, and then I'd hang out in the yard with the kids. Yeah. Mm. That's kind of fun. Maybe a family walk in the evening. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't need to do a lot in this season of life to be happy. Right. Mm -hmm. I love it. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. it's a busy schedule, busy life with working. And so if I had that day off, I would, my coffee's really important. Uh, being at home, catching up on some things, probably getting together with a couple friends. Mm-hmm. Bob and I are great at doing our walks. And then I would just have to spend time with my grandkids. So yeah. Yeah. do something fun with them also. So fun. Yeah. yeah. How many grandkids do you guys have now? Eight with another one on the way. Oh wow. my gosh, it's so exciting. It's pretty exciting. Awesome. June mornings are unbelievable in North Dakota. Hmm. And uh, this morning <clears throat> we had someone coming, so I was out on the front porch waiting, and there was no wind, and it was just so gorgeous. And uh, so I would gladly sit there for quite a while, do read and do quiet time and just... Uh, Soak it in, and then lots of yard work and garden work. Mm-hmm. You guys both live mm-hmm. in just like beautiful settings with yeah. your homes, but like your guys' house, the location is just like wow. And your garden, yeah, it just seems like a very peaceful setting, too. It does, it's amazing. I, I'd do that too if I lived where you yeah. live. <laughs> I'd go to Bob's house, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you, yeah. you, you can, you can come, yes. <laughs> you can come. <laughs> Well, you guys started your business, right? Yes. Yeah. A a couple of years ago. And (laughs) how many years ago? Well, it was 2000, but I'm going to take us back even further. So Bob and I were both in um, a missionary training center. It was a college. Mm -hmm. And we met in high school. We were sweet 16. And fast forward, we got married about four and a half years later. So we got married really young. But it was really interesting. Everybody there had all these visions. I'm going to... Africa, I'm going Mm. here, I'm going there. And the only place God ever put on my heart was North Dakota. Wow. Mm. And it was really interesting. God did the same with you. 
and our vision has always been to, because I'm from North Dakota. Yeah. Bob never was, but he loves North Dakota, which was very, very That's special. Fun. To come back and really be a light mm-hmm. in North mm-hmm. Dakota. That was when I was 20 years old. God gave me that vision for coming back and being a light because there are so many people, especially if you look at the small towns or whatever, they don't have some of the same opportunities to right. be able to have um, that spiritual food or relationships things. So that's been that's, that's been cool. one of the big things that we incorporated into the company. Yeah. Well, from the very start, did you guys decide, hey, this is going to be a values based thing, or, and we're going to build a strong culture within our team that goes beyond just the bottom line, or is that something that kind of transpired over time? How did that come to be? That came later. <clears throat> we wanted it to be done right. We wanted to provide quality service and so forth. But we were kind of blind the first 12 years to the whole healthy culture and what all that meant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If somebody would have said, do you have a healthy <clears throat> culture back in those days? We said, oh, yeah, definitely. Right. And mm-hmm. we didn't have a clue. And mm-hmm. they'd say, how do you know? Well, I don't know. We just do. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels good most days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we had a big clue and things started falling apart. And we figured mm. the trust level was way down. And we knew we had to do something. And that's when we jumped into, um, it was basically Patrick Lynchoni's whole thing on mm-hmm. five behaviors of a cohesive team. Mm. Wow. And that totally changed. It organized what we had in our hearts anyway. We always tried very, very hard to have a great culture and always to equip people so that no matter what they did, they would be um, better people than when they came to us. In fact, mm-hmm. your saying was, uh, you may not have a job with us forever, but uh, if, you know, when you leave, you will be better equipped for anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and, awesome. Yeah. So I don't know if we said you guys' business is Nexus Innovations, right? Right. And so what what is Nexus? Maybe we should have started there. So you started a business, and it's this business. Yep. And what do you guys do? Easiest way to describe it is software consulting. Okay. We don't fix computers. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring up your Mac. Many <laughs> calls. The people who think we know some about computers, we don't build servers. Yeah. We build software systems okay. for organizations. And yeah. so I think that's like the very simple thing. Bob, mm-hmm. Lori, myself, we have no software experience. That is our team. So when people start to ask us anything related to that, like, hey, that's not us. We're going to get you in touch with the right people. Yeah. But our team are really good in that area where our focus is really serving people, customers, et cetera. And so it's kind of helpful because our focus doesn't get distracted by the technology aspect. Yeah. Mm Because we can't even pretend to be experts there. Mm -hmm. We can focus on the areas where we know we're more gifted. Yeah. So you start this business. You're in it long enough to where you said like it started falling apart. So you've walked through hardship with a business. Where when it was falling apart, were you working together as like parents and son at that? I was going to say, how do you guys know each other? Yeah, parents and son. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yep. Yeah, we're you yeah. know we're just it's all connected. We'll get to it all <laughs> yeah, eventually. Yeah. Right? Well, Jordan has had the most promotions of anyone in our company. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he started out as the janitor. Wow. Yes. Yep. Where any good leader should probably start, right? Right. right. Real from grind to glory story, huh? Yeah. Wow. I love it. So now, okay, sorry, you were probably going to continue No, talking. no, I was just. Yeah, so he started there when it started falling apart. Were you working? I, I've the been company? there 15 years now. 15 years. Yep. Wow. Yep. So it started in 2008. The janitor yeah. stuff was before that when I was in yeah. high school and college. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. That's okay. So you start rebuilding and have kind of the tools to set a healthy culture. Um, where where did you guys go from there? Kind of what happened from there? We go definitely ahead. took a dip in okay. regards to team size. <clears throat> that dropped quite a bit. Uh, our offerings, et cetera. Like it was a full reset. Yeah. In regards to taking a step back from what we're doing, as well as focusing a lot of time internally on those aspects that mm-hmm. Bob and Lori, Lori really led yeah. in regards to the culture work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you put all that emphasis on getting healthy internally, it's going to take a while before there's fruit. And mm-hmm. it did for sure. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It made it very clear when we really got the plan of what to do that 
trust is that foundational part. Yeah. And you mm-hmm. have to have that vulnerability-based trust, which mm-hmm. just simply means we all make mistakes. We're not perfect and that we mm-hmm. were never called to be totally perfect. I mean, yes, we strive for it. Right. But when we have each other's backs, right. then we're going to believe the best. And we're mm-hmm. going to say, tell me more about that instead of why did you do that? Mm-hmm. And then you go to the healthy, productive conflict. And that's where you can talk about anything. Sure. We have a team agreement on Hey, kind honesty, no assumptions. Um, what are some of the others? Anyway, it's a list that the team put together. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it's commitment um, with accountability, which simply means everybody gets to weigh in because if you don't weigh in, you don't have buy-in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so yeah. our whole team, they have embraced all of this and the culture, and they are probably— almost more passionate about it than we are. And nine years in a row, we've been voted one of the top place, small companies um, to work for in North Dakota, South Dakota, and part of Minnesota. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's amazing. And so I know our some, team. Yes. I think businesses are getting this more and more. Like, hey, this is an important thing, you know, but um, there, there's probably some people who are like, hey, that takes time, that takes energy, that takes resource that could be spent in other places. And so what, what actually was the difference when you weren't really investing in those things to when you were, or now that you have been like how, what does it look like in a company that does that versus a company that doesn't? Mm. What's the difference in that culture? One, <clears throat> one huge thing is that the team is able to operate together much more smoothly. Mm-hmm. And in this complex world, there's uh, it used to be, you kind of had this one smart dude that knew all this stuff. There's nobody that knows it all now. You really have to depend each other very mm-hmm. heavily. Mm-hmm. I think there's also a big element too, as far as the culture really becomes like, what's the heart of the leaders? It's not mm-hmm. necessarily what do the leaders say, because yeah. people hear yeah. the leaders say these things, you know, <clears throat> and then what do they live out every day? And I think that within us, as well as other leaders in the organization, having good hearts, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. people see that, feel that, and that becomes the culture as well. And so there was a lot of like, in order for us to have really good culture within our team, we have to be constantly developing ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. learning, growing, even just from humility and right. saying some humble pie when needed, all, all those types mm-hmm. of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's been just as important as all the culture work developing in the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, it's I just want to throw in here, one of the interesting things is, you know, in 2000, we started the business. And it took us, because we changed the whole direction of the company more towards technology, in 2005 was when that was the financial, when we were falling apart. Mm -hmm. And so it was that total surrender to God. Okay, what do we do? Where do we go from here? Um, Bob had actually called some people about selling because we thought we're done. We are just done. And we had, it was actually, my dad was a part of the advisory board and he was a banker here in town before. And he said, he prayed with us and he said, no, I believe God wants you to go for broke. Hmm. And he said, do not give up. And I thought, we're hmm. already broke. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're there. Here we are. So it was, you know. How from, broke can we go? <laughs> yeah, really. We'd already would have lost our house, absolutely wow. everything. Wow. So we hung on. And, you know, that whole principle, you have to hang on longer. You have hmm. to be listening. What is God saying to you? But during that time, we all just gave up everything to God, hmm. surrendered totally. And it was interesting. God took it from the foundational, building the company up, the financial, and then it came to us in 2009 through through, um, 2012, I think it is, that, wait a minute, culture is not aligned to where God wanted it. Mm. We had to change that. And that was a lot of work, a lot of money, a lot of uh, investment, which we would never change any Mm -hmm. of it because Mm -hmm. that's where the magic happened. That's where God has worked in various ways in people's lives, and we've seen lives change. We've seen us change, but we're there for each other. Everybody is like, hey, how can we help you? We had a team mm-hmm. member die during COVID. And, mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was really difficult. Everybody was there for each other. We have people from time to time going through difficulties, right. and mm-hmm. everybody is there yeah. for each other. I hear you saying a lot like, God showed us this and God did that. And it's the business world, you know, and you're using those things together. So 
how, how is this a godly thing? I mean, because it's one thing I think, I know your guys' convictions in your hearts, yeah. but sometimes people will throw that around and be like, yeah, and we were just blessed and it happened. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, it didn't, you know, like maybe the Lord wasn't actually honored. You're just saying that he was in it, but he wasn't. But mm-hmm. I know that God has helped you guys. And so why do you view it as not just like good culture, but an actual like God yeah, why, leading kind of thing? Why aren't you thing? giving Patrick Lencioni all the glory? I know you love his, I mean, his content is great, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I think that's a great question. I think I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. What makes it a godly work? Right. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it even just ties back to like the motive behind mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Of like, is our purpose profit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then maybe to you know, glorify God in the way we operate? Or is it to mm-hmm. really invest into people, to care about people most, to show them real priorities mm-hmm. right. versus the business being just a profit thing? Mm-hmm. 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 And I think that, for myself, that's where I develop some passion about the business is like, I can have real purpose. I can mm-hmm. actually carry out God's work every day in this business, even if I'm actually not that passionate about technology. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it, it made me feel like, okay, this is what I'm doing and why I'm doing every day mm-hmm. versus, well, I've got this job and I don't know mm-hmm. my real purpose behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I love even, sometimes people only give God the glory if there is a prophet. Yeah. And I think you were in that spot and you're like, God, we're surrendered no matter what. Like you yeah. would have gotten the glory no matter either way. Sorry, Bobby, you're about well, to say Lori something. Well, Lori looked at me at one point and said, you know, even if this whole thing goes down, I'm still glad we did it. Mm. Because we just knew it had been the right thing. We'd been following his leading. Yeah. And isn't your overall uh, title for this like the unlikely ones or something? Yeah, highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were very unlikely mm-hmm. because, you know, some people grow up in an entrepreneurial home and they're learning business at the dinner table. Well, I grew up in a Christian commune mm-hmm. and knew nothing about money and knew nothing about business, all this stuff. You know, we were just very, very ignorant. Mm-hmm. And so for us, it was really practical to depend on God because we knew we didn't have the answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So what are, um, I mean, can we just talk about the practice of it? I mean, so there's people who are listening who are going to work every day and maybe they're not feeling purpose in their job or there's leaders that are beating their head against a wall thinking, if I could just fire all these people and get all new ones, everything <laughs> would work better. I mean, you know, like just guys going about yeah. that, people going about that every day, like, Man, um, or how do I glorify God in my workplace? Yeah. You know, how do I actually help this team that I'm leading? Or how do I be a good team member, even if not everybody on the team? Mm-hmm. I get, I just, going in charge. Yeah. yeah. And just to pause and say, I ran into somebody that works for you guys and I complimented them on, hey, I, I hear that you're just like thriving in your workplace and doing a great job at Nexus. And he turned and he looked at me and he said, I just really value people, Josh, and I want to see people win. Mm. And I was like, software company you know like and to me that was like oh what you've championed you know has not just been in your hearts but it's in the people like you're saying it sounds a lot like you guys like how you guys would talk yeah something you would say so i just thought that was cool and kind of a testament to everything that you're saying but um i guess i don't even know so you were saying like what about the person that's like going to work every day and maybe not finding purpose are you going somewhere with that well i'm thinking about that person i guess i wasn't sure what question i was going to ask but um like where does where does a leader start, you know, or where maybe somebody who's going to their workplace and nobody's leading this from the top? Yeah. How do they bring this kind of value, you know, mm-hmm. to the place that they're working? I know a lot of people that go, you know, they come to church and they're like, man, I come here because it's like my heart gets filled up and then I go into the darkness of the place <laughs> that I work where everybody's negative and, mm-hmm. you know, all this stuff. And what encouragement would you give to people yeah. in that position to take a first step or what hat do they put on every day when they're going to the mm-hmm. workplace? Mm-hmm. It's a lot of words, but no, first of all, plenty of time to come up with yeah. some great answers. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just say quickly, that's a really hard place to be. Yeah. yeah. It's much easier when you own a company and you can just say, we're doing this. Mm-hmm. So it's tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. It is one thing, though, that we tell people when we're you know, hiring, interviewing, is that this is God's company. We get that out there right away, not that we preach at work. We don't. Mm -hmm. And we 
the three of us are all accountable to God for mm -hmm. our actions mm -hmm. because we don't own this company. It's mm -hmm. his. Mm -hmm. And that gives us a different feel. And so every day, like for myself, it's who, who needs words of encouragement? How, where can I be hearing God? What are the different situations? And so I've turned every day as much as I can remember, uh, you know how you get busy. There's, I mean, the day turns wild, but okay, God, what are you, what are you telling me, nudging me to do? And I'm, mm -hmm. I've really trained myself to listen to God nudges. Mm -hmm. And somebody yeah. will say, oh, thank you. I needed that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, somebody today just, they're working from home and they're in a really tough situation with one of their kids and they let me know about it. Mm -hmm. you know, they were glad I checked in. I wasn't going to check in with her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Obedient. I think as well, you know, the whole like servant leadership concept, it comes from Jesus leadership, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that whole idea of like being a servant leader does not mean you're calling the shots, mm -hmm. telling people what to do, leading from the front, and you're leading from the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can all, I think oftentimes the idea of in order to provide leadership, I have to have a title mm -hmm. versus the approach of like, I can lead like Jesus mm -hmm. in a whole different way than what most people are used to. Yeah. And so while you no, you can't control everything around you, you can still make an impact in your world that is around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That just translates to our team because I've we've been talking about, man, you don't have to have a pastor title to minister to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it can be very easy to be like, oh, I need a title to be empowered in that way, or I need to be at that level of an organization to really make a difference or to make a change. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, every one of us is called, yeah. you know, to minister to people, whether we have a title. Well, you know. we all have a title and it's disciple. You know, yeah, and it's your right. mantle to disciple True. people. And it's like, I mean, that's the greatest title we could have in yeah. any place. I love hearing how people, I, I saw it in the hospital. You know, it's like yep. you can disciple people without them realizing you're discipling them yeah. in the character of Christ just by your example. Yeah. And I think you guys have just done that beautifully, even without us ever working for you or being in mm -hmm. your workplace. But I, I just think... Hearing you talk, Lori, it reminded me of you've come and done some trainings with our team. And I'm like, yep, these are all the same things she said then. <laughs> so was it harder starting or has it been harder maintaining? Because mm -hmm. I'm like, you've said the exact same things. So it seems like you've set the course and you've stayed the course, which that is our weakness. Like mm -hmm. we're like, I'm like, yeah, we set these things. When you came and trained our team, we have not maintained the course. We in started that. focusing over here and forgot about that yes. over there. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I just would love you guys to unpack that and even your perspective, Jordan, on that too. But it's, you're saying the exact same things you were like three years ago when you came and did that training with us. So, what's that been like maintaining the culture? Mm. <laughs> well, she's That's done me. a very good job of that because that, you're right. It does take discipline to do yes. that. Yes. And it takes a commitment to stay the course, but. <clears throat> like Lori said, it's this this is bedrock stuff to us. Mm. It's not just a fad. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna do this for this time, da 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 da. It's like everything we do is centered mm. on these principles. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not just to turn the team around and then you're no. good. Yeah, it was like opinion. this is what it is. This is who we are. Right. Oh. Yeah, it's um I think it's funny. Get emotional. Mm -hmm. When you come close to losing a company mm -hmm. in two different areas, you and you know it's God who gave you the life back. Mm -hmm. You, it's not anything you're going to let go. You realize it's that daily discipline of, yeah. of personally and giving back because people, when they feel valued and they feel they're doing significant work, um, so. Four values people need to feel, that you care about them, you see a future for them, you love them so much you will encourage and correct them, yeah. and then the fact that they matter. Mm. They matter to you so much you, that they have made a difference in your life. That's when people start to thrive and build their, their legacies, and mm -hmm. then they give that to mm. um, other people. Yeah. Because the whole thing is five levels of leadership, John Maxwell, mm -hmm. we are training leaders all mm -hmm. the time. And mm -hmm. I see Bob and Jordan doing that all the time and in their relationships and people at work, but people outside of work also. I mean, it's so yeah. much who they are. Mm -hmm. And that makes me feel so proud just to, to be on a team with 
with um, Bob and Jordan. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's so the other aspect of having almost lost it makes it really easy to stay humble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you're like, yep, it could have yeah. gone. When, when I was really young, I used to look down on people that went bankrupt. Mm. Oh, not anymore. Because mm-hmm. when you've been that close and you realize just one little difference, yeah. we would have been there too. Right. Yeah. Very, very real. Wow. wow. I think it's easy too when you tell the story of an organization to talk about like, you know, we went through this hard time in 2012 and got the culture yeah. right. And now we're here in 2023. <laughs> and I think that what you miss so much of is just like the daily grind yeah. of like choosing yeah. every day to fight for <laughs> those things. Yep. And what are the things that we're going to continually instill Mm -hmm. and hold people accountable for and have Mm -hmm. tough conversations about and all those things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the stuff that I know like people on the team, they value is like that they know, let's say Bob and Lori are for them and they care about them as people Mm -hmm. first, Mm -hmm. more than anything. Right. Versus, you know, we set these things, we talk about them every now and then, mm-hmm. and they're nice talking points yeah. when we have an interview or an article. Yeah. Right. Versus it's just like being messy and yeah. leaning into tough stuff. So I think one of the fears that I've had and maybe others listening, and for us it's always a weird, not a weird tension, but it's a tension too because the people that are on our staff team, their house of worship is also their work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, and their boss is also their pastor, yeah. you know, That's and there's weird. just like dynamics in yeah. that, that we've yeah. had to navigate. And part uh-huh. of that tension is even like, okay, we love you before what you do, yeah. but you still have to do what you're getting paid to do, do. right? <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes there's that tension of like, you can't, like, you can't walk in and, and mope around and tell everybody your problems and, you know, like bring, there's still an attitude that you have to bring. And so how does a leader, I think maybe some people lean away from this because I think if I just am a little bit more harsh and standoffish about that, I don't get the emotional part. Yeah. Um, But how do you draw those boundaries with people of somebody working from home because they had a thing with a family member, but they still have to produce, right? And Mm -hmm. how have you guys had those conversations and honored that culture? I know there's not like one brush stroke yeah. that just says, yeah. this is the perfect way, but yeah. what are principles? It's or- a question we're still asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can yeah. talk about like, oh, we tried it to handle it this way. You know, you can, mm-hmm. don't have to paint the perfect picture either. Those are things we talk about every day. Yeah. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. they are. And I think we definitely are on the same page in regards to, we're probably going to be a little too far to the side of grace. Mm-hmm. But we're also going to have to have difficult conversations of, yeah, we do have to be right. producing team member. And even, you know, you look at it from, are they a producing team member or is this the right fit for them? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like, so. where are they going to be more successful longer term? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so taking that perspective of, you know, we're keeping them on or we're not holding them accountable because mm-hmm. we want to be nice to them, but we're not being nice to them. We're not serving yeah. them well in those situations. Mm -hmm. And so it's balancing them and saying, hey, look, if I don't have this conversation with you about how this is holding you back, I'm not serving you well. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think what we've learned and what you're saying is it's a tension to live in, not a problem to be solved. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. never going to be, here's exactly what it looks like in every situation, which Mm -hmm. is what I like. I like certainty. I like the document that (laughs) tells you exactly how to do it. (laughs) I think there was a conversation I said, I think you either have to quit or you have to come to acceptance that this is just never going to go away. It's the tension. Yeah. And, it, and it, yeah. how can we figure out to not let it drain us all the time? Because yeah. it can. It can just drain you. If you care about people, Yeah, it's a draining thing because mm-hmm. you, if you didn't care, you could just feel like, whatever, I'm just going to have this conversation and not care about you as a person. But, yeah. but I think that's part of just yeah. being relational is you're not just looking at somebody for their talent, but you're discerning mm-hmm. the heart, yes. you know, constantly. Mm-hmm. and. And but that's what decisions. I, yeah, that's what I was, when you guys were first talking, you can't fake this. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I kept thinking. Like you said, it's just who they are. Um, it doesn't like turn on and turn off. So then any leader in the workplace, like it has to be a heart transformation of the leader first, right? Like it's just right. not something you can, you could try, I guess you could do some content, yeah. but um, just make that be the bedrock of it has to be who you are as a leader rather than. A curriculum that you implement or right. yeah, check-ins or things like that. 
Yeah, because yeah. we do we do um, have that in place because it does help them. So people, in case you do need to recon, you know, redirect. You yes. know, you do your quarterly check ins, but a lot of weekly ones um, that you do with your team, and you know, I do, and uh, then you're able to keep your finger on the pulse a lot better. Yeah. And to figure out, well, where do I go with this or that? And they appreciate it, too. And you have a lot of check-ins. So we all do. Uh, But there was one more point with what you were saying. Oh, our core purpose is that we empower organizations for success through Mm. vision, leadership, and strategic solutions. So everybody, we can keep pointing back to that Mm -hmm. and um, with our behavioral values, core behavioral values, and our strategic anchors for our company— and that's how we can center also where our discussions are with, with you know, our teammates et cetera, yeah. mm-hmm. when we need to get back on track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or else they're leading us in yeah. some amazing ways. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. so what's been like working with family? That's what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, let's, let's talk about go it. there. I work with people <laughs> I love. We lead together. I was going to say, like, we just had our anniversary and we're like, yeah, nine years. And I was like. I'm more proud of us for working together in this capacity for seven years more than being married for nine, which has been a challenge too. So would love for you guys to just talk about your experience with that or your journey, the great moments and maybe the hard moments and how you've walked through it. Because has there been a full succession plan? Like, no. Okay, sorry. That was an assumption on my part. Oh, there, there is a full succession plan. You don't know about it? <laughs> <laughs> I think communication. Too, like, is communication. Key. Yeah, like, is it, is, is it just working together? Is it like a succession plan? All that stuff. Go into all of it. I'd love to hear it all. And I'm going to ask why, you about your well, worst moment. Let me, like, why, why bring your son into it? Right? You know, how, how did you develop around that? Like, um, and then, yeah, and then like, why even think about what's next for the company? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, why not just? I'll answer the why bring your son in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he graduated from college, and thankfully, and uh, <laughs> and so he went and worked for another company, and he was there for a while, and it was going to not so fun, and so forth, and. We really ideally wanted him to be out for a different company like three to five years. Mm -hmm. And he lasted eight months. And we, (laughs) this is really fun to tell the story. (laughs) Yes. Jordan can give his perspective next. (laughs) And so we we really needed help and he really wanted to make a change. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, let's just do it. We'll try it. And he came and he knew nothing. And uh, thankfully, some of the guys mentored him well and so forth because he had a lot to learn Mm -hmm. and uh, went along and was able to learn quickly and and, uh, he had to earn their respect. Mm -hmm. But for us, having family is so super helpful from the standpoint of just knowing that it's there's someone there that you can truly depend on day and night. Mm. And we always knew that Jordan, Jordan's very entrepreneurial and he, we've always been able to talk and we can disagree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously then when we put together some of these other documents, we all became even more on the same page. But do we have disagreements at times? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll have some hilarious discussions. Folks, I think I need to tell you, you need to change here <laughs> and this and that. And, and, you know, but I mean, he'll do it to be humorous and it may not end up humorous, but <laughs> we, we are able on both sides to talk and we know that we have that deep trust. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, you end up in some interesting situations, mm-hmm. but we, we know that we can work it out. Mm-hmm. It's not always fun, but yeah, we can work so it out. Do you want to add to that? There was no grand plan on their part or my part yeah. when I right. came in. It just came to be. Yeah. You know, it was it was more in startup mode at that point. And yeah. it was like, hey, I think this is good for everybody. Let's mm-hmm. give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's how it started, which mm-hmm. looking back 15 years, it's hard to imagine where we've all come from. Right. And how we've worked through a whole bunch of stuff of in in a family business, like the odds are that a transition won't happen successfully. Mm-hmm. Or even that a business will make it to year 10. 
right? you know, mm-hmm. alone. And so there's just been so many things that have happened that you look back and you're like, wow, it's amazing all this has happened to get us to this point. Yeah. And so while, yeah, we don't have everything figured out going forward, you believe that, all right, we've, we've gotten to this point and we work together. We have a foundation of trust together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to continue working things out. Mm-hmm. Jordan, when did you first become interested? I'm trying to think when we first had our first conversation. I don't even remember. No, it was, well, I, w- I was going to be switching positions in the company I was mm-hmm. in. Yeah. And so then they mentioned to me. And- mm-hmm. So I know there's, like you've alluded to it, Lori, and I know there's been a time where we've had lunch and Jordan was like, yeah, Bob and Lori, and I had to have a chat and figure that out, you know, yeah. and <laughs> like Bob and Lori, you mean mom and dad? <laughs> <laughs> but, but let us peek in the window for a second of that conversation. Mm-hmm. And when you come to a moment where you're like, man, two of us are on one page and one of us isn't, or we're all on different pages or, you know, whatever, how do you approach having, because it's so easy with people that you love or you're close mm-hmm. to, to be like, I know their weaknesses, I know their tendencies, I'm just going to go after those things and get, you know, and leverage them. And so, and I'm, I'm sure it's not perfect, and, mm-hmm. but how, how have you learned how to have those conversations graciously? Or what do you do to have them graciously? How do you approach them? Or is it just a total <laughs> mud fight and we'll talk about it later <laughs> next season? <laughs> you know, through owning a company and having to deal with people, you learn very quickly you have to change maybe the past way you might have done it. Mm-hmm. And so learning so much on healthy, productive conflicts. So Yes, um, we actually this week, last week, have had some discussions where we're on one side and mm-hmm. Jordan's on a different one and felt very uncomfortable, mm-hmm. very uh, uh, upsetting. And, uh, okay, wait, we haven't, we haven't hit a challenge quite this big. Okay, can we get through this? And so just sitting down and, and talking and, uh, you know, finding the way. But letting go of what I think and help me understand. Tell me more about that. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I want to make sure I'm really hearing your heart. Mm-hmm. Where are you at? Mm-hmm. And which doesn't come naturally. I'm. I think we're more the same personality. But, oh yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that doesn't come naturally. No, to you, it, it doesn't. <laughs> you're spot on with that. He, he can attest to it. We've yeah. had the same meetings, conversations. Yeah, even though yeah. you just said that, I don't know if I say it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. I don't know if I say. Tell that. me more about it. Yeah. As long as it lines up to how I feel. Yeah. yeah. Lori mentioned the healthy, productive conflict. So, you know that principle, whether you're meeting with a family member or a non-family member. Mm-hmm. When I grew up. At home, like, you just didn't do that, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you learn how advantageous it is, how beneficial it is to go through the tough period in order to Mm -hmm. get to the good stuff, the principle carries over to the family too. And when you know that everybody has that commitment to, hey, we're not going to just assume we know, we're not going to this and and be surmising things and all that that are erroneous— Let's just sit down and talk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one of the things we try to practice in situations like that is, and I had to learn this. I had to be trained in every single step of how to do this because it was not my nature. I was not brought up necessarily. If there were things that were happening productively, I didn't know it. If there was things that were very dysfunctional, I didn't recognize it. And so I really had to be trained. But just really learning, like, I can fully explain where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. I can state my facts, yeah. you know, of here's how it feels to me. Here's, you know, the tension I'm living in. Here's where I'm at. If I don't point a finger and, but you, you know, and, but just stating where I'm coming from and then asking questions and probing the other person mm-hmm. and just saying, is that where you're coming from? Mm-hmm. Like, now will you tell me your set of facts? And I just think, and I'm, I'm not trying to teach you all. I'm just saying for anybody listening I think that's often what we miss is like, I'm going to share where I'm coming from. Like I, we can be so quick, even still today to just jump to assumptions. Yeah. Well, this person said that. And so <clears throat> here's what's wrong with them. And if they would change, it would all get better, Right. <laughs> you yeah. know? And, um, but knowing, Hey, I can explain totally where I'm coming from and then give room for the other person to do the same. And then we can tentatively talk together about how to fix it. Mm-hmm. And I, a lot of people, 
a lot of leaders aren't even comfortable giving other people that room at the table to say, hey, you're free to explain to me why you mm-hmm. disagree, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times with family members, whether it's my wife and I talking or parents or whatever, you're less filtered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And more emotional. Mm-hmm. And so I think that working that dynamic with Bob and Lori, I think what has allowed it to be successful, though, is just the whole f- piece of like, I trust them, their hearts, their motives in all these situations, and we have the same mm-hmm. underlying values. So we're not having completely different perspectives from like a values perspective. Maybe right. we do in the way we approach things, but I think that allows us to navigate through things. Mm-hmm. Whereas if we valued completely different things, it it wouldn't yeah. work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. then it just comes down to, hey, we're, we're for each other. We're on the same page. We have the yeah. same values. It just comes down to really whose decision is this, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, at, at some point you can just say mm-hmm. it has to fall in somebody's. Sorry, we're getting so, pretty technical. No, but. I would love to just kind of ask you guys as parents. Like I'm just thinking of us as parents yeah. and Avery. <clears throat> like to watch Avery grow up and then if I was sitting in a business with him where I would, what shift would you have to make as a parent do you still, when you're in a work meeting, is it like, this is my son, Jordan? Or is it like, this is a an adult, a responsible adult, a peer, Jordan? Like, I don't know. What shift and did you guys yeah, have to go through? And it's through? not just family. It's somebody who's like raised up their protege and now it's time for them to take over or it's time yeah. for them to lead in a different way and having to. Or like, working with someone, yeah, like younger than that's you. That's like, coming up, yeah. Yeah, in that way where they could be your son or daughter and how they do you respect do them? Yeah. I don't know. I'd love to hear you guys' perspective on that or what you guys went through for that. Go ahead. You know, I think it came so gradually, Mm -hmm. and it was pretty exciting to see how Jordan um, just really established himself as a leader. But yes, every once in a while, I'll kind of go, oh, that's right, he's my son. Mm -hmm. I mean, but we're at work, and we we work together so well. Jordan and I actually end up working together quite a bit on, on various things. But I would say in the early stages, it was just learning to let go of things, Mm. to delegate, walk away, let him do it. He had great ideas. But I think what really prepared me for that was one of the best things that ever happened to Bob and I was owning a business together because it forced us to really up our game with communication and expectations. So then I could transfer that to Jordan. If I don't think, if, if we hadn't worked together, I don't know if I could have done it as easily with Jordan, mm. Mm. you know, because I yeah. had to already shift things. Like when I'm at work, we're, we're spouses, but we're not. We are people that mm-hmm. work there and we mm-hmm. need to respect each other in those roles. Yeah. And then at home, the at re- home. like flipping yeah. that switch, yeah. you know, to you not flip. being coworkers. Is that and, what you go through? Oh. I mean, we're still figuring it out, right? Uh, there's, there's sometimes, where, I mean, Janae said to me one time, just being vulnerable, like I think sometimes we come home at work or we come home from work and we talk about work because we don't want to talk about other stuff, mm-hmm. you know, or we don't want to deal with attention or something else that's going on. How easy it is to just carry yeah. that right into your home mm-hmm. or make that what all the relationship is about, you know. Mm-hmm. But well, still, I'm just thinking, yeah, you do have to shift. Let's say, yeah, like when your daughter says a birthday party or something and you had mm-hmm. an intense discussion at work, it's like, yeah, you have to be able to shut that off. And now it's like, no, I'm here for my son and my granddaughter, or, you know, my granddaughters and yeah. Well, and I yeah, think I'd dynamic. poke at like you calling them Bob and Lori, but there's something healthy to that. <laughs> that is. Of like, yes. it's like us for our kids, we don't call going to church on Sunday. That's going to church. When I go to work on Monday, I'm not going to church. I'm going to work and oh, just yeah. helping our Boundaries. kids separate that out. Yeah. Interesting. You know? Yeah. So that, having different hats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think Dave Ramsey tells a story of, you know, the idea of like his son is sitting for cross from him and his son has been doing a terrible job at work. And he's like, hey, whatever your son's name is, I'm going to have to let you go. And then going and sitting next to his son and saying, hey, son, I heard you got fired today. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously? And well, his story is not actually true. Uh, It's just that whole idea Mm -hmm. of the hats, which can be difficult to separate, but Mm -hmm. you also have to understand. Mm -hmm. And I think there's two lessons in that. I know we're drawing to the end, but one is like your identity can't be in what you do. Right. Like your identity has to be in who you are in Christ. Mm-hmm. It has to be in who you are as a person, mm-hmm. you know, more than what you do. And then also like we've been talking about, I think every one of us has a responsibility to raise somebody up. Yeah. And whether it's in our workplace, whether you're 
a connect group leader right now and you're mm -hmm. looking at your group saying who should be the next leader of this group right. and just looking at every area of your life and what you're doing and saying I mean we're always assessing that like man if we were if we had to leave evangel for some reason are we preparing anybody that would mm -hmm. be able to follow us and mm -hmm. just looking at every area of your life and you do that yeah. in your will with your kids if something happened to us who would take mm -hmm. them you know and always yeah. just preparing mm -hmm. a new generation or the next yeah. person and empowering people into that i think those mm -hmm. are just powerful principles one other big key in that is that we it, learning to understand and value each other's giftings mm -hmm. yeah and that with us, and it's with the whole team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the more that everybody is able to work in that gifting, it's just, it's a it's a big game changer. Mm -hmm. Huge. So what's each of your gift sets? Like, what's each of your gifting specifically? I'm really good at drinking coffee. Oh <laughs> Bob tried to take himself out of this conversation before we even got started. Uh, <laughs> stinker. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, what's I'm your the thing? relationship guy. Awesome. Yeah. How about you? You know, I'm I'm very much strategic, and uh, I, I love teaching, developing people, mentoring. That's I I love that. Mm -hmm. Just help encouraging. I'm more of the organization structure, get stuff started, get a team formed type. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I naturally think. Mm -hmm. Take something, make it happen. I love that. I love just, yeah, hearing how different, but yet you can be unified on the same thing. We mm -hmm. are all so different with what we bring. That's I been part it. of the, if you want to call it the magic, what God put together. Right. Yeah. And we appreciate so much mm -hmm. yeah. the different giftings. How many staff do you have or team members do you have? We're total about 25. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot of dynamics. Oh, yeah. I think sometimes we go to work and think, if everybody just thought like me and was gifted like me, this would be so much easier. But nothing like would actually get done <laughs> yeah. to the full extent that it needs to, right? But Probably be more frustrating. But we all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just think it's so good. You have to see other people's strengths. What uh -huh. were you going to say? Yeah, I think Lori's <laughs> thing she's brought to the team and now to other organizations mm -hmm. like you guys mm -hmm. as well yeah. is just that whole thing of like understanding yourself. That's great but then having the mentality of understanding other people mm -hmm. to understand, okay, they're different than me. That's good. Yeah. And here is I can best how I can best communicate, work with them versus they're different than me. They shouldn't be. How can I make them be more <laughs> uh -huh. like me? Yeah, man, if that doesn't describe marriage too, man, I don't <laughs> That's know. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Serving one another, right. yeah. despite your differences, right. living in harmony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, it's the sharpest discipleship tool mm -hmm. you'll ever experience. Right. Yeah. right. But your workplace can be that too, as you learn mm -hmm. to live with other people and love them mm -hmm. for who they are and realize that their gifting that's different than yours is not their flaw. Right. You know, it actually can be a blessing and a help. Mm -hmm. And it brings wisdom. So, yeah. an opportunity for growth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whether yeah. you want to or not. Which yeah. we all want. After it's happened, but not when it's taking place yeah. Yeah. in our yeah. lives. Yeah. So much yeah. of what we've talked about has popped so many different verses in my mind, too. Yeah. Of, But in particular, the one that's like, do not grow weary in doing good. And I mm -hmm. think in the effort of even mm -hmm. culture, and really, you guys are describing the character of Christ in a lot of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It can, you can grow weary in that. Because, mm -hmm. like, I even think in parenting, that is the verse when I have to get off of that couch. And I'm like, do not grow weary in this exact same discipline mm -hmm. of these children because you're going to reap a harvest, you yeah. know, a right living and in due time. And so I think I'm encouraged from this conversation to like, do not grow weary in those efforts because it's worth it. it mm -hmm. The hard work is it was worth it and you will reap something in the long run. Yeah. 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 Thank you for your investment in people and for you know, not just building a company, but building people. Yeah. And it's demonstrated in your own lives and how you give up yourself to others, you know, and to God's kingdom and just not wanting to leave a legacy that's greater than Nexus, you know, I think is yeah. is what's happening, you know, and that's a really cool, beautiful thing mm -hmm. that that's you've all heart. done. Yeah, totally. and you're doing it. I mean, I know there's always like, we've talked about a lot of tensions and we've all lived in them. We're living in them right now. But when you look at the long game, right. it's really an amazing picture of mm -hmm. what God has done mm -hmm. and his faithfulness to you guys, but to your family, you know, 
into everybody who's worked with you. So way to go. We're thankful to know you and inspired by it. Yeah. We Thank love you. you. Guys. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for being our first, you know, five people. Yeah, yes, wow. Uh, Thanks for filling out the couch. First time, yeah. It's great. Awesome. Well, if you are listening and you think someone else would enjoy this conversation, share it with them and subscribe to the podcast so you catch new episodes. But we will see you guys next time. Bye.